reason I fell in love with the clean industry is uh, it's a simple business, but it's not easy. But it, it, mm. if you do, if you do good hard work, you treat people well, you do what you say you're going to do. You're halfway good at building relationships and communicating. Um, you know, you can uh, you can really succeed in this business. Um, and I've found that that's what I thought when I got into it. And I found it to be exactly true eight and a half years later. You know, what did your goals look like then and how have they changed? Yeah, so I'm, I'm pretty transparent with like numbers and stuff. So um, in terms of uh, in terms of like goals, when it comes to how we want to run the company, how we uh, kind of culture we want to build our values, that really hasn't changed. We've worded them a little differently here and there, but they're basically the same. Right. But in terms of goals and growth and uh, looking at revenue, for example, um, I'll be honest, I didn't really have any goals before prior to adopting uh, uh, the EOS framework. Um, mm -hmm. Are you familiar with the EOS? Yeah. So I am. Yep. We've, we've really dug into that uh, since 2019, maybe. So for like five, six years. Um, and obviously through that framework, um, and we needed some sort of framework like that. Um, it basically just gives us guardrails and organization uh, to allow us to to do what we're good at. Um, and so we've had a lot of goals since then. But before that, I didn't really have goals. I didn't know what this was going to become. I was just cleaning by myself at the beginning. People who um, might listen to some of this and they're thinking, oh, my God, how do you get from 90,000 to 9 million? Because that is the dream. That is absolutely the dream. What do you wish you knew then? Or what have you learned um, between then and now um, that's really made a difference in how you run your business? You know, I think, uh, you know, if I was talking to somebody that was at 90,000 or at 300,000 and, they, and they, have, they have aspirations to get to that point, you know, on, on a high level, I think, um, you know, there's certain things that should never change, which are your your values and your core. You may word them differently, which we have and stuff to make sense to more people and whatever. But your values and what you stand for, um, what's important to you, um, what you and then use those values to hire, fire, recognize, reward people um, and then live and die by those things. Those should not change much over over time. As you grow, um, other things do change. And a lot of it's around mindset, but a lot of it's um, I'm involved with a program called Strategic Coach, which is one of the largest yeah. and uh, most successful entrepreneurial coaching programs in the world uh, where entrepreneurs are coached by um, other really high level entrepreneurs once a quarter. Um, and uh, the founder of that, Dan Sullivan, wrote a book called Who Not How. And uh, embracing the, if you really want to get to the next level and you know in eos they talk about letting go of the vine um, it's a very hard thing to do because in the beginning you do everything and you're hustling and you have to i was cleaning at night i was selling during the day i was cleaning at night i was selling during the day and then i was trying to hire, hire you have to you have to be willing in the beginning to take a few steps back maybe financially short term to take a few steps forward what what does that mean that means hire people um hire people early and often. The more early and often you hire people and you put people in place to make decisions and do more, the faster you can grow. Um, and the more uh, able you are to. And I think a lot of people get stuck too is they think, well, nobody can do it as good as me. Not just the cleaning, but maybe they get to the point where they're overall, the, but they're running all the day to day. Um, but nobody can do it as good. And, and, and in a way they could be right, right? But I've always loved the saying, if you can get everybody in your company to do 80% of what you would do, that's pretty good. And what is that going to lead to? Probably 80% more growth. Um, so you have to be willing to let go of the vine. You have to be willing to think in terms of who, not how. Not, not how can I accomplish everything. Not how can I figure this out. Because a lot of that stuff is not really your strength. And the bigger you get, especially when you're getting to our size, a lot of it's 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 managing time and energy. It's figuring out what are my, what are my strengths and where should I spend most of my time? 
when you don't have that luxury when you're small you do everything when you do stuff that you hate and you're not good at but you do it anyways eventually you get to a spot where you hire people that fill in the gaps of your weaknesses um you know i did operations but i'm not naturally gifted at it um i have a guy now who's my number two or my president coo integrator Jeremy, and we couldn't be more opposites. So um, you have to be willing to hire people that are opposite of you. You have to be willing to hire people that are smarter than you um, and allow them to do the job and allow them to screw up and maybe take a few steps. They get caught up in the short-term financial overhead, if you will, and, and not look that the growth is like this, but then growth is also this, this, maybe even this, and then this. Um, and I think there, there's there's some of that, but you know, focus on what you're good at once you kind of can get to that point, uh, and then surround yourself with people that, that fill in the holes of your weaknesses, right? Like I'm not, I'm I'm decent at sales, relationship building, and um, culture and visionary type stuff, and that's what I focus most of my time on now. And I surround myself with people that are good at, at the at the other stuff that that you know kind of suck my energy. Our goal was, or well, not our goal, our actual, our revenue in 2016, because I started in January 2016, was $90,000 annual revenue. Um, in 2017, it was 350. In 2018, it was 950. In 2019, it was uh, 1.4. In 2020, it was 2 million. And um, 2021, it was 2.4. In 22, it was 4.8. And then last year it was 9.1 and we'll probably do a little over 11 million this year. So, you know, and a lot of that is attributed to, uh, to swept, right. I mean, um, we, what I liked about, what I liked about swept is, um, it's, it's, you know, we looked at a lot of different systems. Um, and the reason I think we've stayed with swept and I think the reason you all have had success is, you all are not trying to be everything to everybody. You're not trying to be the software for the $20 million companies. And I think one of the biggest mistakes some technology companies make is they don't, they're not really clear on who their customer are and who they serve. And you guys are, and you're not trying to, um, you don't, you listen to your customers, but you don't, you don't change every little thing that they ask for. You try to, have a consistency on what works, but you, you've kept the, the, the system and the app simple and easy to use and easy to look at. And that is huge. And cause you know, we, we haven't had any issues and, and I know other softwares, I'm not going to mention names have had a lot of issues when it comes to clocking in and out. Um, and our cleaners have clocked in and out through the app. Very, very few on the phone. Um, like mean calling. Um, yeah. We've had, very few issues um, in what is it seven and a half years now working with you guys, but you also had a platform that wasn't just clocking in and out. That was just a small piece of it. And we've been able to, you, it was everything we needed, right? It was supply management and, and, and ordering. It was, uh, you know, it was inspections. It was uh, the communication tool works better and swept. And I'm not just saying this because I'm talking to you right now. It works better in SWEP than what I've seen in other systems. Um, and uh, we've used that a lot. And, and I think the I've learned that um, the the extent to which we can grow is to, is the, to the extent in which how good relationships we build, but also how, how well we communicate, not just with our customers, but internally. And that having like an internal chat for each uh, building, be able to attach photos, and our customers love love that using the app as well, and sending us photos and, and things, and it's it's been it's been huge. And when you can automate all those functions um, and keep it simple, and you guys aren't trying to be everything to everybody, there are certain, you know, um, I don't know. It's just it 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 it, it is what exactly what we needed, and uh, for a long long time.